area interviewing Martin. So what area in the college are you a success coach of, Martin? I am a success coach for creative industries. If a student was having a bad mental health day, how would you help the student with that? So I would start with maybe having a one-to-one -one with a student somewhere private, seeing that they wanted to discuss their problems or issues with me, and then depending on the severity of it, we would then go and book an appointment with student support. And if, and if you had to change anything in terms of a student's timetable, in terms of tutorial, how would you approach them about it? So we've done a couple of things in the past, depending on what's going on. So with tutorials, if there's an issue with tutorial, we would just organise for regular one-to-ones instead, or maybe move the time if I'm free to do it as well. Or if it's a more of a big timetable change, then we would liaise with uh, lecturers and curriculum area managers to see if we could sort things out for them. How many students do you look after? Um, it's around 290 at the moment. And, 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 and uh, has it ever gone up and down? Like, have you ever had like, less students? It does fluctuate, so it depends on the year, how many students, how many groups. So last year I was at CMAS and I've had about 180 uh, creative industries, so media, performing arts, art, design and fashion are quite big, quite a lot of students, so it's a bit more, and then people come and go throughout the year, so we've lost a few, but then gained a couple from other areas, so yeah, it does go up and down. How much planning goes into your enrichment sessions, and what are the enrichment sessions? Okay, so enrichment's been a bit up and down because of COVID, I uh, haven't been able to do much for a couple of years, we're starting to get things on now. We have an enrichment, uh, the enrichment officer, I think, called Matt Bellows, and he organises all sorts of stuff across the college. It's so quite a lot of planning goes into it, and then he has meetings with the success coaches, and then we try and push them out to the students. We also have an enrichment fair, I think it's at the beginning of the year. So yeah, quite a lot of effort goes into enrichment. Do you give student advice close to the end of their course about what they may be going to do next? Yep, yeah, so we have a big push on progression and destination after college. So around this sort of time, hidden up towards half term in February, we were logging what everybody intends to do or wants to do next year. And then up before Easter, every student will have a chat with a careers advisor to book that in, check that they're able to do it, give them some advice around that. And then towards the end of the year, we check in to see where you are all definitely going. Yeah. Hey Martin, what got you into being a success, a success coach and why? So I became a success coach because I started my teacher training and I wanted a job within education. So I first started out by working in the LRC and I helped up there and I delivered the study skills programme for the college. Then the first success coach role came up, but I didn't get it at the time, but I got it the second time round. And I thought it'd be a good way leading in towards becoming a lecturer, which is what I wanted to do dealing with all the sort of stuff around teaching whether they're out the actual teaching bit. So hopefully it will lead on to becoming a lecturer next. Very interesting, Martin. Thank you. Go. Today we're interviewing Martin. So Martin, what area do you do success as coaching of in the, in the college? So I'm in the creative industries for the hair and beauty department. If a student was having a bad mental health day, how would you help the student with that? Okay, so usually sometimes they might come to me, so we'll go somewhere private, they, they want that one-to-one -one because they've built up a relationship with me, so I can sort of assess um, how severe the, um, the issue is at the time. Um, it could be that I then signpost them to some external agencies or there's some apps on their phone that we can get put on. Or if it's quite, um, a, a, quite a serious mental health day, then I'd signpost them to go to student support to, um, to get some health and wellbeing and to set that in place. How often, or when a student's had a bad mental health day, have they, have they come to you over going to student services or...? Um, it it all depends. If it's an initial um, situation, they might come to me um, first, just so that we can assess um, what their needs are. But sometimes, if it's something that they've always been going to, they might always have had that relationship with health and wellbeing, so that might have been put in place. They'll go to health and wellbeing first. But um, it just depends on what, um, whether I've had that rapport with them, whether I've 
interested in having that those conversations. So, if um, if you had to change a straight agents' timetables in terms of like tutorial, how would how would you ap approach the, the students about it? Because so sometimes you can get students that like like a routine. Okay, so um, tutorials generally aren't changed. Um, if they are, it we would tell them verbally. So at their tutorial, we'd say, right, next week there's been a slight change. You're doing work experience, or this is happening. Um, if it's after that, I've seen them. Sometimes I liaise with the subject lecturers, and I ask them to then pass the information on. So a lot of it's done verbal communication, sort of face to face. As the backup, it's also put on Teams as well, um, so that they've got that communication to refer to. But generally, we don't try to change tutorials that often. And and if if you had a student who was quite anxious ab about like the change, like when you told them verbally, how would you go about like dealing with their anxieties? We could have a little one to one at the end, and I could sort of put the change in, in more information as to why it's happening, just to reassure them, or it could be that um, we need to take them, if it, sometimes they, they get a little bit anxious about a new room, so we could meet them at the original room and then take them to the new room, but we'd always sit with them on a one-to-one, -one. we wouldn't allow them to still be anxious, we'd explain the reasons for the change. How many students do you look after? Um, probably around 150 at the moment, but that could be 200, 250, depending on obviously enrolment and how many students we've got. We haven't got sort of a minimum or a maximum. How much, how much planning goes into organising your enrichment sessions and what, what do they involve? So most of the enrichment sessions are now um, planned by Max Bellows. Um, from the gym, so he's the enrichment um, officer. So we just work alongside Matt. So he does all the planning, but then we advertise that out to students. We li liaise with him, coordinate the students in to be able to access the enrichment. Do you give students advice close to the end of their course about what they may be going to do next? Okay, so all advice is ongoing. Okay, so we start giving advice from day one right through their journey to the, the last day of their course and beyond if they need that. But yeah, definitely towards sort of, probably about rounds about now actually, February, March time, we start thinking about progression. So do they need help with CVs? Do they need help with job searches, apprenticeships, their next course? Might be a change of course. So all support is all the way through that learning journey, but definitely towards the end, we're looking at the progression. Okay, and what got brought you into being a success coach and why? So, I, for numerous amount of years, I was a Heron Beauty lecturer. Okay, so I've worked at a couple of colleges. Um, I then progressed into apprenticeships because I fancied some new challenges. Um, missed Heron, working alongside Heron Beauty students. And then I saw this opportunity um, back at Ferrum College, which was where I started my, my teaching. And um, yeah, I just really fancied the new challenge and I like the different role of supporting the student. So it's just my passion is just in education and hair and beauty. So it's, it's where I fit, I feel. Thank you, Martin. That's been very interesting. Okay. Today we are interviewing Tendai and Lucy. So Tendai and Lucy, what areas do you do your success coaching in? Um, so I work with the construction students at Ferrum College and also the T-level students for health and social care and also early years as well. And I work across two um, curriculum areas. So I'm success coach for hospitality and travel and also sports and clinical services. If a student was having a bad mental health day, how would you help the student with that? So normally what we will do is uh, we'll offer uh, them an opportunity to have a one-to-one -one with um, myself as their success coach and sort of like see how uh, best I can support them. And we also have uh, a fantastic health and well-being team, which uh, we can then also signpost them for more support and then obviously 
as their success coach, I just continue to support them and check on them. But yeah, we do work well together with the health and well-being team. If you if 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 say they didn't want to go to the health and well-being team and it was it was something that they just wanted to speak to you about, how would you go about sort of like if they were really really upset, how would you sort of go about like make, helping them calm down and? Uh, so we obviously start off with simple things like a uh, nice breathing uh, technique uh, where we just sort of like try and uh, make sure they regulate their emotions in a way and then uh, if they're not interested or comfortable about going to the health and well-being team, we do also have uh, resources that the health and well-being team share with us but we can also uh, support and share with the student. Uh, so we have fantastic uh, online staff um, through Hampshire County Council and other independent um, mental health organisations like MIND. Uh, so we can also look at that information together with them and just see uh, how best we can support them until they feel a bit comfortable to maybe return to their lessons or just take a few more um, minutes uh, just to settle down. If you had a student who's quite like they like to have like a routine and they don't like it when it's changed, how would you approach the um, if you all of a sudden had to change like a day you were doing tutorial on or like changes to do with times tables? How would you sort of approach that with them? Yeah, unfortunately, timetable changes are some things that do happen now and again, uh, and we always at the beginning of the academic year just notify our students um, about Teams because we have a fantastic platform, Microsoft Teams. So normally we will then uh, inform them about these changes on Teams and uh, if they're not feeling quite comfortable, uh, we also do come out and um, offer an opportunity to walk them to um, either the new classroom change, if it's a classroom change, and uh, we do offer that extra bit of support where we can uh, support them and walk them across to wherever uh, you know they are meant to be at that point and just reassure them as well because most of the times it's just temporary changes. Uh, how many students do you look after? Um, so I'm currently looking after around 260 students in my caseload. Yeah, for my case load, I've got uh, 202 students at the moment that I look after as well. How much, how much planning goes into organising your enrichment sessions and, and, what, and what, what do your enrichment sessions in fact hold? Um, I think it's different across um, different curriculum areas. Um, obviously, we all do different things depending on what students we've got. Um, at the moment, I'm currently organising a charity football tournament with my construction students, and we're also partnering up with CMAS students as well. Um, so there's obviously quite a lot of planning that get, um, is involved in that. Um, but obviously, we've got um, Matt Bellows, who's our enrichment officer, so we work closely with him. Um, and also we quite like getting the students as involved with planning as possible. Mm -hmm. So actually we've spent quite a few, um, I've spent quite a few tutorial sessions looking at the planning elements with my students and getting them to organise some of it. So when it comes to charities, I'm getting them to take charge and go off and find the charities and stuff. So I think it depends on the enrichment sort of activity we're doing, but I think we, we as success coach do um, try to have the students sort of lead it as much as possible um, but yeah so it, it kind of depends really do you give students advice close to the end of their course about what they may be going to do next uh, yes so we um, look at the start of the year um, sort of the middle and end of year but it's kind of something that's ongoing throughout the year looking at their next steps um, so at the beginning of the year we look at career prospects um, so we look at potentially where this course could lead them um, and then through one-to-ones throughout the year we sort of just um, reconfirm that to so see if they're still happy with the course and if they still want to continue with it um, and then towards the end of the year well actually from sort of April onwards we're looking at the next steps so whether they want to sort of continue 
um, onto a course next year or if it's you know level three which is two years we want to check that they want to go on to the next year or if it's higher education um, so there's lots of fairs um, they can go to in regards to UCAS if they're wanting to go on to higher education but we also have things like apprenticeship week as well national apprenticeship week where we can um, support them looking at different options and and the and the and the, and the last question: What got both of you into wanting to actually be e success coaches, and why? I think for me, um, I just liked the part, um, the idea that we were part of the full student journey. Um, so obviously, the lecturers are looking after them with their um, academic studies. Um, but I liked, I liked the fact that we were able to be involved in, in all of that. And I also liked the idea of almost becoming a student advocate. Um, so if students felt like they weren't um, in a position where they could raise any concerns, um, I kind of liked the idea of being that person for them. Um, so that being that person that they could speak to about any concerns or any worries that they had, I think that was it's just such a rewarding role. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to go into it. And I've always uh, had a passion for education, to be honest. Um, but my background mostly was uh, in the NHS um, and mental health. Uh, so obviously, after doing my teacher training uh, and saw this uh, position and what it offers, it's sort of like best of both worlds, isn't mm -hmm. it? So you support the students, you also um, support them uh, pastoral support and also do uh, the sessions and yeah. be there for their progression from the minute they come into college. Never, um, yeah. There's never two days that are the same, the same. Really in this role. It's just const constantly changing and we do all sorts and I, yeah. I really like that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. It's been very interesting. So thank you for being involved. Thank you. Well, thank you for having us.